All right, guys. So welcome to our ninth pet online class. Um, if you may have heard recently, there is news that this is the way we are going to be finishing the school year. So I hope you're ready. I hope you have been having a good week, a good day, a good time. And let's get right into the class. Warm up. All right. So before we jump uh, straight into the book or notebook or anything else, um, I need to remember 9D usually is talking about a TED talk, right? So this is the TED talk lesson. It's called The World's Most Boring Television and why it's hilariously addictive. Do you think something boring can be addictive? That's what we're going to find out. Uh, let's read a little bit the quote that we have over here. Life is best when it's a little bit strange. Thomas Helum, which is a speaker on the left. Let's see a little bit about Thomas. Thomas Helum is a producer who specializes in documentaries for the Norwegian television channel NRK. He was part of a team that began the slow TV movement by putting boring events on air with full-length coverage as they happened. Pretty interesting, right? So, I want you to take out your notebook and we are going to answer... We're going to be talking about, and I want you to answer some questions about TV, all right? So, in your notebook, you're going to answer for me these questions. What kind of videos slash TV programs do you like to watch? Do you like watching anything that might be considered odd, weird, or boring? Do you like watching reality shows? If yes, Which ones? If not, why not? And is there any reality TV shows you hate? Why? Please pause here and answer. I'm going to give you some examples of what my answers would be. Uh, what kind of videos TV do you like to watch? I am a big fan of video essays, which is basically a video discussing a topic as if it were an essay, right? Uh, discussions, thoughts, maybe a little bit with a little bit of spice, not just everything like very formal and plain, but with a little touch of something, right? Uh, just as an essay is. Makes me think. I think it's good for stuff. And talking about TV, I am mostly... Uh, Person who watches either movies or like... I don't watch that much TV, honestly. <laughs> Do you like to watching anything that may be odd or boring? Now, here's when I pull out one example. Barroom Gardener Restoration. I love this channel. As you can see, he's just robbing paintings. He's a restoration art channel and... Honestly, it seems very menial, but somehow I adore it. He just puts, he, he restores paintings, like, you know, dot by dot. Or, you know, you have to scrub up the dirt. So it's like, very slowly scrubbing off the dirt. Or, you know, oh, I have to fix the wood. So, you know, tack, tack, tack. So you could probably think that's very boring. I love it. I don't know. I think it's weird. Do you like watching reality shows? So... Here are some examples if you don't exactly know what counts as a reality show. Uh, the Bachelor, Survivors, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, American Idol, The Boys, uh, The Academia probably. The Island, any kind of island things. Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, Spray Runaway, Shark Tank, The Real Housewives, Hell's Kitchen, Big Brother, Dance Mothers. And a lot of other ones that I cannot think of. All of those are considered reality TV shows. Why? Because they are, well, supposedly based on something that they're doing in reality, right? RuPaul's Drag Race is a contest, you know, a real life contest. So they're classified as reality shows. Which ones do you like? If not, why not? If you don't watch any, why not? And is there any reality TV shows you hate and why? Personally, I really don't like Dance Moms or those ones about beauty, beauty pageants for kids and Honey Boo Boo. Oh, God, I just 
don't really I really really dislike them they're really tacky for me um I find the people being not entertaining bad just bad for me you know so those are my answers my examples I hope you answered in your notebook so let's continue classwork all right, so let's go to the student book, pages 112 and 113. And as I already said, this is 9D, which is the listening, aka a TED Talk lesson, right? But before we jump right into the TED Talk, we're going to do exercise one. Look at the authentic listening skills box. Then listen to the news report and write down any words you hear. Okay, first let's read. Authentic listening skills. Collaborative listening. One reason listening is difficult is because you won't understand everything that you hear. However, different people understand different parts of a message, so working together can increase your understanding. Now, generally, I wouldn't give this advice because in the exam and in any kind of setting that you are going to be using your listening skills, you're not going to have someone there to help you understand why are you listening right especially in a conversation unless you repeat the, to the person please repeat it again so instead of l relying on someone else to help you understand the key here i think it's to listen carefully and listen to it twice all right if you listen to it twice you first focus on whatever it's saying whatever it's meaning and then the second time you can refocus and be more specific about your answers, all right? All right, so based on this, we are going to play it twice. The first time, time to get as much meaning as you can, and the second time, you will write down what you understood about the listening. Track 64. Norway is a country that gets relatively little media coverage. Even the elections this past week passed without much drama. And that's the Norwegian media in a nutshell. Not much drama. A few years back, Norway's public TV channel, NRK, decided to broadcast live coverage of a seven-hour train ride. Seven hours of simple footage. A train rolling down the tracks. Norwegians, more than a million of them, according to the ratings, loved it. All right, so now that you paid attention to it once, this time, the second time, is your time to put something in your book. You're going to answer in your book, what do you think this listening is about? Track 64. Norway is a country that gets relatively little media coverage. Even the elections this past week passed without much drama. And that's the Norwegian media in a nutshell. Not much drama. A few years back, Norway's public TV channel, NRK, decided to broadcast live coverage of a seven-hour train ride. Seven hours of simple footage, a train rolling down the tracks. Norwegians, more than a million of them, according to the ratings, loved it. All right, I'll give you a little bit of extra time for you to write your answer in your book. All right, so I will show you exactly the transcript of what this man said. Norway is a country that gets relatively little media coverage. Media coverage is that it comes out in the news and uh, news stations talk about it, right? So they don't really talk about it on the media. Even the elections this past week passed without much drama, and that's the Norwegian media in a nutshell. Remember that in a nutshell is like the resume of whatever happens, whatever it is you're talking about. So in resume... There is not much drama. A few years back in Norway's public TV channel, NRK decided to broadcast live coverage of a seven-hour train ride. Remember, broadcast live coverage, that means that they were putting it in TV, right? Seven hours of simple footage, a train rolling down the track. Just that, right? Norwegians, more than a million of them, according to the ratings, loved it. Apparently, they loved watching the train for some reason that is the meaning i want you to check that if you, whatever you wrote is close to it um if i had to resume it i would say uh norway's not very interesting very exciting in news they love watching very boring things like trains something like that right so now we are going to jump 
past some questions that I already asked you in the warm up, if you didn't notice, haha. <laughs> And we're going to jump right into exercise 5. Watch part 1 of the talk. Put these NRK TV programs in the order that they were broadcast. We have A. A program about a ship traveling along the coast. B. A program about people knitting. And C. A program about a train trip. So we're going to put this in order. Let's start with a clip from Al Jazeera's listening post. Norway is a country that gets relatively little media coverage. Even the elections this past week passed without much drama. And that's the Norwegian media in a nutshell. Not much drama. A few years back, Norway's public TV channel, NRK, decided to broadcast live coverage of a seven-hour train ride. Seven hours of simple footage. A train rolling down the tracks. Norwegians, more than a million of them, according to the ratings, loved it. A new kind of reality TV show was born, and it goes against all the rules of TV engagement. There is no storyline, no script, no drama, no climax, and it's called slow TV. For the past two months, Norwegians have been watching a cruise ship's journey up the coast, and there's a lot of fog on that coast. Executives at Norway's National Broadcasting Service are now considering broadcasting a night of knitting nationwide. On the surface, it sounds boring because it is. But something about this TV experiment has gripped Norwegians. So we sent the listening post's Marcella Pizarro to Oslo to find out what it is. But first, a warning. Viewers may find some of the images in the following report disappointing. Okay, to, so according to this video, what was the first one they mentioned? It is, of course, letter C, a program about a train trip. That's the one that started everything. Next, it's A, a program about a ship traveling along the coast. And finally, the one that isn't ready yet, wasn't ready yet. Uh, they talked about making it, but not it being, it being broadcasted yet. A program about people knitting. Now, we're going to move on to exercise 6, which says, watch part 1 again. Use one or two words to complete the sentences. So we're going to pay attention to the video again. I'm going to play it again. And I want you to see and complete these sentences with a small phrase. Let's start with a clip from Al Jazeera's listening post. Norway is a country that gets relatively little media coverage. Even the elections this past week passed without much drama. And that's the Norwegian media in a nutshell. Not much drama. A few years back, Norway's public TV channel, NRK, decided to broadcast live coverage of a seven-hour train ride. Seven hours of simple footage. A train rolling down the tracks. Norwegians, more than a million of them, according to the ratings, loved it. A new kind of reality TV show was born, and it goes against all the rules of TV engagement. There is no storyline, no script, no drama, no climax, and it's called slow TV. For the past two months, Norwegians have been watching a cruise ship's journey up the coast, and there's a lot of fog on that coast. Executives at Norway's National Broadcasting Service are now considering broadcasting a night of knitting nationwide. On the surface, it sounds boring because it is. But something about this TV experiment has gripped Norwegians. So we sent the listening post's Marcella Pizarro to Oslo to find out what it is. But first, a warning. Viewers may find some of the images in the following report disappointing. Okay, let's go check the answers. Number one. There is no storyline, no script, no drama, no climax. And it's called... What was it called? Of course, slow TV. Number two, on the surface, it sounds boring because, well, is it boring to see someone knitting? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> that's, that's the answer. Three, first a warning, viewers may find some of the image in the following report disappointing. You could also say boring or um, tiring. 
makes you sleepy, honestly. So, let's continue on to exercise 7. I want you to answer in your book. Have you heard of or watched Slow TV? Is Slow TV something that you, your family or friends might enjoy? Why? Personally, I had never heard of Slow TV as is, but I have heard of like similar concepts. Uh, personally, I think up to a point, as I mentioned previous in the warm up, I like watching this dude uh, do painting, and and it's basically watching paint dry, right? He he just puts a dot, and another dot, and another dot, and it's very slow, and you may say boring, but you have some classical music and. It's nice color, so I feel it has its, its appeal, you know. I don't know about a train ride or a car ride. I don't know how interesting would it be, but maybe I w definitely could give it a try, right? In a boring night or as a background while you're working. Sounds nice. Now, after you have answered that in your book, we are going to move on to exercise 8. Watch part 2 of the talk. Match the two parts of the sentences. There are two endings, H, H, you do not need. So we have sentences 1 through 6 on one side, A through H on the other. We are going to match it based on the video. Please take a moment to read them. And we are going to jump right into the video. How did we get there? We have to go back to 2009, when one of my colleagues got a great idea. So he said, why don't we make a radio program marking the day of the German invasion of Norway in 1940? We tell the story at the exact time during the night. Wow, brilliant idea, except this was just a couple of weeks before the invasion day. So we sat in our lunchroom and discussed what other stories can you tell as they evolve? What other things takes real long time? So one of us come up with the train. The Bergen Railway had its 100 years anniversary that year. Goes from Western Norway to Eastern Norway, and it used exactly the same time as it did 40 years ago. <laughs> over seven hours. So we called our commissioning editors in Oslo, and we said, we want to make a documentary about the Bergen Railway, and we want to make it in full length. And the answer was, yes, but how long will the program be? Oh, we said full length. Yes, but we mean the program, and back and forth. <laughs> Luckily for us, they met us with a laughter, a very, very good laughter. So one bright day in September, we started a program that we thought should be seven hours and four minutes. We will arrive at Haugaster Station. And now we thought, yes, we have a brilliant program. It will fit for the 2,000 train spotters in Norway. Brought on air in November 2009, but no, this is far more attractive. This is the five biggest TV channel in Norway on a normal Friday. And if you look at NRK2 over here, look what happened when they put on the Bergen Railway show. 1.2 million Norwegians watched part of this program. So. That's strong and living TV. 436 minute by minute on a Friday night. And during that first night, the first Twitter message came, why be a chicken? Why stop at, 8, 000, why stop at 436? When you can expand that to 8,040 minute by minute and do the iconic journey in Norway, the coastal ship journey, Hurtigruten from Bergen to Kirkenes, almost 3,000 kilometers covering most of our coast. So, just a week after the Bergen Railway, we called the Hurtigruten company and we started planning for our next show. We wanted to do something different. The Bergen Railway was a recorded program. So, when we sat in our editing room, we watched this picture, it's all station. We saw this journalist, we had called him, we had spoken to him, and when we left the station, he took this picture of us and he waved to the camera and we thought, what if more people knew that we were on board that train? 
Would more people show up? What could, how could it look like? So we decided our next project, it should be live. We wanted this picture of us on the fjord and on the screen at the same time. But five and a half days in a row and live, we wanted some help and we asked our viewers out there, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? What do you want us to film? How do you want this to look like? Do you want us to make a website? What do you want on it? And we got some answers from you out there and it helped us a very lot to build the program. So, in June 2011, 23 of us went on board the Hurtigruten coastal ship and we put off. All right, so I'll give you a quick minute to answer these in your book and then we will check the answers. Number one, Thomas and his colleagues didn't make, couldn't make a show about the war because why couldn't they make a show about the war? It's E, because they didn't have enough time, right? The war was like a week long, so they were like, no, that's not a good idea. Two, they decided on a show about a train trip because, see, B, it takes a long time. Just, it takes a really long time to get from one point to the point in this trip. Three, the Bergen Railway trip was a good choice because, see, it was celebrating its 100th anniversary. Four, the showmakers were surprised because, A, a lot of people watched it. Five, the show about the trip by ship was different because H, they would broadcast it live. It was going to be live. And six, they asked viewers questions because F, they want to help designing the show. They wanted to see what did people like about the original one to better replicate it, right? We don't use D nor G in this exercise. Now let's answer exercise number nine. For this exercise, we're going to read the eight sentences and you are going to write true, false, or the information not given. So please pause the video to read the sentences. Now, here we go with part number three. Always at evening when the ship came to the sea, saying she had snored as I ran to the harbor to see. I have some really strong memories from that week, and it's all about people. They made all the stories. This is Carl, he's in the ninth grade. It says, uh, I will be a little late for school tomorrow. He was supposed to be in school at 8 a.m. He came at 9 a.m. He didn't get a note from his teacher because the teacher had watched the program. We also could take pictures of people uh, waving at us, people along the route, thousands of them, and they all had a phone in their hand. And when you take a picture of them and they get the message, now we are on TV, Dad, they start waving back. This was waving TV for five and a half days, and people get so extremely happy when they can send a warm message to their loved ones. It was also a great success on social media. On the last day, we met Her Majesty, the Queen of Norway, and Twitter quite couldn't handle it. And we also, on the web, uh, we streamed, during this week, we streamed more than 100 years of video to 148 nations. And the websites are still there, and they will be forever, actually, because Hurtigruten was selected to be part of the Norwegian UNESCO list of documents. And it's also in the Guinness Book of Records as the longest documentary ever. So. Thank you. so we were allowed to be part in people's living room with this strange TV program with music, nature, people, and 
slow TV was now a buzzword, and we started looking for other things we can make slow TV uh, about. So we could either take uh, something long and make it a topic, like with the railway and the Hürtgerüten, or we can make, take a topic and make it long. This is the last project, it's the Peep Show. It's 14 hours of bird watching on a TV screen, actually 87 days on the web. So, we think that slow TV is one nice way of telling a TV story and we think that we can continue doing it, not too often, once or twice a year, so we keep the feeling of event. And we also think that the good slow TV idea, that's the idea when people say, oh no, you can't put that on TV. When people smile, it might be a very good slow idea. So, after all, life is best when it's a bit strange. Thank you. Now let's check our sentences, guys. Number one says, Carl got in trouble with his teacher for being late for school. Is that true, false, or is information not given? That is false. Number two, the people waving were talking on the phone to people watching TV. That is true. Number three, the queen was interviewed on the show. Not given. That information is not there. Number four, when the queen appeared on the show, Twitter crashed. That is true. Number five, the show holds a world record. That is true. Number six, Thomas thinks that slow TV was a fun idea, but it isn't attractive anymore. False. He thinks it's very attractive. Number seven, he thinks that good ideas for slow TV shows are ideas that other people don't think are good. That is true, like the video of the birds. Maybe we think that's not a good idea, but actually it was a good idea. Number eight, slow TV is becoming popular in other parts of the world. That information is not given. He mentions he does that, but he doesn't mention if it's famous in other parts of the world. Now let's continue. For the next exercise, guys, we need you to take out your notebook. So here we have vocabulary in context. We have in one side words, and in the other side, we have their synonyms. So you are going to match them. For example, the first one says grip. What is grip? Without a break? Think up? Fashionable, fashionable word used in media? Deal with? Excited? Or common watch? Well, grip means excited. It's a synonym of excited, when you feel very happy, right? So please, pause the video and answer in your notebook. Match them in your notebook, please, guys. Well, I hope you're finished. Now let's check. Come up with. What is the synonym of come up with? Think up. For example, you can say, come up with an idea. That means that you think an idea. Next one, show up. Come and watch. Excellent, come and watch. Or for example, we can say, Today, one student didn't show up to class. He didn't come, he didn't attend to class. Synonym, right? Next one. In a row, what does that mean? In a row. Without a break. For example, I have had studied French for five hours in a row without a break. Yes, clear? Next one, handle. The synonym of handle is deal with. For example, when you have a problem, you can handle that, that problem. You can deal with that problem. And the last one is buzzword. Well, buzzword is a fashionable word used in media. 
For example, slow TV. That is a new world, is fashionable, and is used in media. Now, for the next exercise, you are going to write the answers in your notebook. For example, the first one says, well, tell your partner about each of the following. You are going to tell a partner about a TV show, game, or book that has gripped you recently and why it is so good. Remember, gripped means excite. So you are going to write about a TV show, game, or book that has excited you recently. Next one, an idea you plan you've come up with recently. Next one, an event you went to where very few other people showed up. Next one, well, next one is interesting. The longest number of days in a row that you didn't go to school for some reason. Oh, I think I know the answer of this question. Do you know the answer? The longest number of days in a row that you didn't go to school for some reason. Next one. A difficult situation that you handle it. And the last one, a buzzword that's popular at the moment. Remember guys, you have to write these sentences or these answers in your notebook. So please pause the video and answer in your notebook. Now the last exercise, well, these are just tips for you guys. Now that you are at home, you have the opportunity to practice your speaking. So here we have some tips. Letter A, when you want to, when you want to convince people to support your argument, you can ask the audience relevant questions or ask them to imagine themselves in a situation. You can also describe a series of events, explain why the argument is true, let the audience experience something so they can decide for themselves, make comparisons, and provide statistics and other information. These are tips for you when you want to support your argument, for example, in debates, or when you want to convince people, you have to use this. You can use them. So guys, I recommend you to practice in the mirror of your room, with your pets, with your friends, with your brother, sister, with your family, if they, if they speak English. Try to practice them. Now, which of these examples Thomas used in the video to provide, to prove and to support his argument. Well, he described it a series of events. He let the audience experience something so they can decide for themselves. Remember, he showed them some videos. And he also provides statistics of other people. So guys, I hope you finish your, your activities of today. Now let's go to the homework. Hello guys, it's I'm Monte and today we are going to review your homework. So please take out your workbook, page 106, and as you can see we have four exercises and a video. It's important to me and uh, tell you that you can watch the video searching with the title on YouTube and here we'll leave you the link. Okay guys? So we are in unit 9, the world's most boring television and the exercise number 1. The instruction is listen to the TED Talks excerpts, complete the summary with sentences A to D. So after the audio, what we should do is select a lower sentence for each higher. 
remember they must make sense okay so i don't know maybe i choose order b for um, number two okay but i'm not sure i'm just say and that's all number two the instruction is watch part one of the TED talk then read the quotes and choose the best explanations for what they mean okay so to answer this exercise we should watch the video and select one of the options to complete each sentence we have two options mm -hmm. was exciting to the, the, the elections and it's never very exciting okay so just choose one and the exercise number three the instruction is watch parts two and three of the pep talk match the descriptions with these numbers so for the third exercise we must finish the video to know the number that responds to each sentence and be able to select the correct okay guys it's easy and finally exercise number four the instruction is choose the correct words or phrases to complete the sentences so we have five sentences and three options for each one choose the one that completes the sentence according to what it says okay guys that's all see you soon and have a nice day bye guys hi guys this is paulina again and today i'm going to be reviewing your homework with you so let's open our workbook on pages 102 and 103. These exercises are about the reading on page 103, so I really hope you already read it. So let's begin now with our exercises. So our first exercise on page 102 says, Complete the sentences with these phrases. There are two phrases you don't need. So we have seven sentences and nine phrases. We have to choose carefully which phrases go best with the sentences. In the first one, unless you're very famous, it's not very easy to make a living as an actor. Number two, because he's so pleasant and generous, Dev has never found it difficult to make friends. Number three, the weather was gorgeous, so we decided to make the most of it and have a picnic number four i know it's tricky when there are so many choices but very soon you'll have to make a decision number five did my explanation of the homework make sense to you number six i'm not available today but i'd be happy to make time to see you tomorrow and number seven Spending even a little time with an older person can really make a difference in their life. Now, in exercise number two, we have to choose the best heading for the paragraphs one through six in the text. Remember, this text is from page 103. So, in the first one, we have this paragraph and the answer is letter B, rapid changes in Cuba today. We can find this answer by reading this part in the paragraph. Cuba is a country that's experiencing rapid and significant changes. For the second paragraph, the answer is letter A, the changing face of Cuban music. We can find this answer in this part of the paragraph. While musicians like Giovanni prefer to stick to historic and traditional styles, many young Cuban artists are today feeling free to experiment with the rhythms they learned as children. Number three, the answer is letter B, Manana, a place where musicians meet. This answer is in this part of the paragraph. Manana, a music festival that aims to combine traditional Cuban sounds with international electronic music. Number four, the answer is letter A, a mixture of rhythms. And we can find that answer in this part of the paragraph. Her first album, which mixes jazz, funk, electronica, and Afro-Cuban rhythms. For number five, the answer is letter B, the growth of fashion in Cuba. 
and we can find that answer in the first sentence. Fashion is another area that's developing in Cuba. And for number six, the answer is letter B. What's next for Cuba? And we can find that very easy in the very first sentence of the paragraph that says, what comes next for Cuba? Next, we have exercise number three, and it says, choose the correct options to complete the sentences. Number one, Giovanni del Pino is a Cuban musician who's always preferred to play traditional music. Number two, at Manana, Mililian Galis took part in a performance of Cuban, American, and Iranian music. Number three, a typical concert at Manana might include musicians playing a mix of rumba, electronic music, and hip hop. Number four, now that travelers from all over the world are able to visit, Cuban artists are starting to reach wider audiences than ever before. And number five, young fashion designers in Cuba dream of taking part in exhibitions with designers from all over the world. And the last exercise we have for this homework is number four. Read the text and choose the correct answers to the questions. The first one. Why is Cuba today visited by travelers from all over the world? The answer is letter B. Cuba is no longer cut off from the rest of the world. Number two, according to paragraph two, why is music an important art form for Cuba? Letter C, music is an expression of Cuban style. Number three, according to paragraph three, what is one result of Cuba being more open to the world? Letter A. Young Cuban musicians are performing with musicians from around the world. Number four. What does Gizzy Garcia mean when she says, all the rhythms that we make aren't pure? Letter C. Gizzy and her band mix Cuban music with other types of music. And number five. According to Miguel Leiva, how are young Cuban designers breaking the stereotype of Cuban fashion? The answer is letter D. Young Cuban designers are being influenced by new ideas and creating their own fashion. And that's about it for your homework review, guys. Thank you and bye. See you soon.